This is Sophie and Day, and I'm actually here with my husband, Chris, uh, who is off screen, <laughs> but um, very much present. He's not this imaginary person that I talk about who doesn't actually exist, I promise. Um, but yeah, we're here at a different location today. We're at the library, and um, we came for a little stay and play with our baby because <coughs> it was following an appointment she had for her physiotherapy. Um, and so we're here now just chilling. Uh, so I thought I'd go ahead and get our daily puzzles in today. And since these are so early, um, I've started to, again, select a topic that we could chat about. And so today, in the spirit of having our baby with us, we're going to talk about babies. Um, so the puzzles I start with are the ones I like the least, and then I go to the one I like the most. So we'll start with cross climb. And as we get into this one, and Chris, maybe you can help me. I'll say the clues and you can tell me what you think. It's so easy, like it's ridiculous. Um, but before we do, um, my first real thought on babies is just how insane the concept of a baby is. Like, it, like if you think about it, the, all the from the Big Bang theory to evolution of the first planaria turning into mammals somehow crawling out of the primordial soup to you know generations and generations of of astralopithecines and um i don't know homo erectus to more generations and generations of homo sapiens coming out of africa to your great 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 grandparents to your parents to you to then you trying to create a baby like that it's insane just the odds of us being here you, you know are or how difficult it must be um it's kind of mind-blowing that we're even here and that babies are a thing that exists and um then you go and actually try to have one <laughs> and when you're confronted with problems like me with having pcos and um then being an older mom it's it gets really frustrating to realize like as natural as it seemed for so many people and for so many generations of people, um, that for it to be such a challenge for you it can be it can be a bitch. So we spent ten years, ten years trying to have a baby naturally or like by a, a biological baby. Um, so it's it's insane how much has to go into babies coming into existence and then also how difficult and special it is when it actually happens so that's my sort of initial thoughts on babies but if you love to share your thoughts on babies feel free to leave a comment or call in Chris what do you think about babies <laughs> yeah like when you say babies like <laughs> It's a straightforward man. He thinks of babies. Yeah. He likes cute babies. He's always sending me fat babies. Which I think is so sweet. And that to me, that's like real masculinity. Men who send their wives cute babies are real men, okay? <laughs> but let's jump into cross climb. It's our first puzzle of the day. Again, not very difficult. So what do elbows, knees, and some straws do? Chris, what do what some elbows, knees, and some straws do? They bend. All right, and then you're looking for like one or two letter changes to find the next word. So a shelter at a campground or at a music festival is probably a tent, I would say. Um, something to, as in to care for. I'd say like tend, tend to, tendies, tend to, tend to. A final exam for one, a test, right? Yeah. This is so easy. To make into a book or uh, as loose pages, bind, I'm gonna guess. 
All right, yeah, we got those right. So now we have to rearrange them into the order of the letter changes. Bind, bend, tend, tent, test. Well done. So now, a flying creature and a term for a home that cre that creature may build. A bird in a nest. Oh my god, these are so mind-numbingly easy. All right, we got that one done in a minute 24, y'all. Good job. <laughs> so let's move on to pinpoint, which is my next least favorite because it's just so easy. Um, and then I guess another thought that um, I have about babies and just the difficulty of babies coming into existence is how unfair it is, I think, for like teenagers to be, you know, reprimanded as much as they are when they do have babies um, what I mean by that is like when I was growing up uh, I was raised in a very southern Christian household and um, yeah so I was told my whole life don't get pregnant don't get pregnant don't get pregnant you know um, so yeah so I didn't but a lot of friends of mine certainly didn't get that memo or they did and you know things happen anyway but you know of course they would of course they would I feel like whenever you have uh, biological animals who have this compulsion to procreate or at least just to have sex that's like that's what's gonna happen sometimes so I don't think that people should uh, look down on their children as much as they do when they get pregnant young because it's just the natural course of biology you know it, you know to try to say oh you know we're Christian and so you have to abstain like it's it's stupid it's bullshit you have to understand that your kids are going to go through puberty and go through adolescence and start having these urges and so to pretend that they don't exist and to act like we don't owe it to our kids to give them proper sex education so they know how to mitigate their chances of getting pregnant. If you don't do that and then get mad at your kid for getting pregnant, that's on you. You're an idiot. So that's kind of my second thought about babies. I just feel like as easy as they come to young people, <laughs> not me because I'm old, but um, yeah, as easy as they can and come to younger people. Um, that, you know, they should be given a little bit more slack and a lot more education when it comes to, um, to that. Yeah, so that's my second thought on babies. We can jump into pinpoints, um, or you can give me a call or leave a comment if you have any thoughts or questions about our LinkedIn daily puzzles, about babies, about sex, about any of the topics I have listed up here. Um, or anything that's on your mind. We're going to hang out here for a little bit. So, yeah, call in. Um, but let's start pinpoint. Pinpoint is basically where you are given a word and you have to guess what its association is. And if you can't, then it'll give you another word. And you get it. You, sh you have to start kind of figuring out what the, uh, the common thread is. So it's kind of like connections. So the first word we have is garden. I would say, I don't know. What are some? No, it's with a capital G. A garden. So maybe things that arenas are called. Nope. Pasta. Oh, salads. So types of salads Caesar, Waldorf, and potato over the other ones. Again, not the most challenging puzzle. <laughs> so with that, let's go ahead and move on to Tango because Pinpoint is so easy. Um, I always look forward to doing Queens. That's why I save it for last because it's my favorite. Um, and then I guess my next thought about babies, um, just to tell you about our baby. Um, she, again, took us 10 years to have her. Um, we adopted a little baby, um, five years ago. So we've been parents for five years before we, um, 
had her, and she was the um, result of our second IVF attempt. Um, and IVF is amazing. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And it's so interesting how it's so being so politicized right now. So because in states like Alabama, where they give personhood to embryos, which is stupid, because even naturally, a third of pregnancies, you know, miscarry. So embryos aren't people. They're just little. It's like it's like having a seed and not wanting to do anything with the seed. Um, okay, I don't think that's a real person, but hi, Covenant Four. Um, yeah, so you know. It's like acting like a, a, because a seed will be a tree one day, you know, you're gonna plan to cut down your seeds. Like, it makes no sense. You can't, you can't, you can't gauge your lumber <laughs> uh, stores on, you know, acorns. So, anyway, that's a dumb thought, but that is my thought. I just feel like with IBF, it's not something that should be. Um, you know, as difficult to get as it is. It's very expensive. It's not covered by a lot of insurance. Um, and so I, it's funny that Donald Trump's like, oh, I'd give everybody IVF. Like, how? How are you going to do that? It's so expensive. Um, but I would love to see that actually become a topic where not only should we get Roe versus Wade enshrined into law and codified into law but i think taking it a step further and actually helping people who want to start families that would do more for the pro-life movement wouldn't you think to actually create more life but you know i digress that's my third thought on babies is that it should be made easier to have them um because even with ivf again it took us two tries to have a baby so you know think about the expense involved and all that um yeah it's it's wild. So let's start Tango, our third puzzle. Um, with Tango, you have suns and moons, and you have to um, have an even amount of suns and moons, so like three of each in each row and in each column. When you see an X, you have to have the opposite symbol, and when you have an equals, it has to be the same symbol, um, and you can't have more than two in a row. So a lot of rules. A lot of rules. So let's kind of figure out where we are here. Um, alrighty. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Right, a starting point is not really jumping out at me. I will say um, if we look at this row and we have two moons, we know we need two suns and one more, or sorry, three suns and one more moon. So where's that other one moon going to go? That's a good question, maybe. Um, maybe we can look at our opposites here. This is challenging. Okay, so if we have two suns, we need one more sun and three moons. So that means that we've got to have opposite here. Mm. Yeah, this one's a this one's a tough one, guys. I'm gonna think on. Normally, this one's pretty. Um, a pretty easy puzzle. This one's presenting a bit of a challenge today. So, you okay? I have no idea. I'm gonna do some exploring. All right, so if we need another sun, there's definitely gonna be a sun here because you have to have an opposite. So since we need three moons, there's gonna definitely be two moons here and here because there's gonna be a sun and a moon at some point here. And the same here, there's gonna be a sun and a moon someplace here. And we know that our third sun will be here. So these will have to be moons. So now whenever we have two in a row, we can't 
have more than that, so we know that those are going to be suns on either side of those two. Um, this one has two, so it has to be a moon. That's equal, so that has to be a moon. I feel like now that we've kind of got the trick of it, we're in smooth sailing now, so this needs another sun for this row. Uh, we need another sun for this row. We need another sun for this row. Uh, and now we can't have two in a row, so we need a moon, and then the opposite is a sun. We have our three suns, so we just need two moons. This is equal, so that's a moon. We can't have more than two in a row, so that's a sun. Same here, so that's a moon. Um, we need we have three moons on this column, so we need another another sun. That's opposite. Can't have more than um, three in a row, so we need a, a sun there, and there you go. All right, I think once you kind of get the end, you're good. So that's good. All right. So thank you. Um, good job, everybody. Let's see. So, okay. Let's go ahead and set up our queen's puzzle. And while we do that, my final thought about babies is um, maybe a little macabre. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Whenever you see movies... Um, you know what, I'm not going to say this. I'm not going to say it. We'll, we'll say something else. Babies, okay. I feel like you really shouldn't have a baby unless you're ready for it and you want it and there's no other pressure on you to have a baby. It's because you want it, not because a spouse or partner wants it, not because your parents want it or your religion wants it. Um, and the reason I say that is because there's so much backlash against people who choose not to have children. Um, like, oh, how selfish is that? How is that selfish? How is it selfish to, to not want to harm another person because you can't give them your entire self because you didn't, you, you would always know they were unwanted. You, if you don't want children, I think that's perfectly fine. Oh, baby. <laughs> yeah, because kids are a lot of work. Um, and I feel like the, the no child movement is, is is a perfectly fine thing to do. I mean, there's always going to be enough people in the world who do want kids that you don't have to worry about the population coming to a screeching halt just because just because some people out here don't want kids. Um, so there's really no reason to um, jump down somebody's throat because they've made that decision. I think she's pooping. I think this is a pooping cry. Oh baby. Oh baby. She's pooping. She's pooping. Oh no. Oh no. It's Definitely poop. All right, so we'll have to handle this in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Poor baby. Um, yeah. That's the thing with babies, they poop. <laughs> so you have to you have to do do things about that. But yeah, I'm a big fan of um what do you call them? Dinks? Dinks and sinks, double income, no kids. I have a lot of friends who are dinks and I'm 
very, very happy that, that they, get to, they get to live the lifestyles and uh, do traveling and all that. And I, the funny thing is, is I don't feel that um, having children, that, that prevents me from doing anything I want to do. Like, I, I look forward to traveling with my kids and showing them things and new places. And so, I mean, it just depends on what you want. <laughs> And there's nothing wrong with anything that you might want. So that's my final thought on babies. Is that if you want babies, that's great. If you don't want babies, that's great too. If you have a baby young, cut yourself some slack. If you can't have a baby because it's so hard, really look into um, jumping straight to IVF. I wish we had done that. Uh, we did IUIs and timed um, intercourse and trigger shots and all the things before we just went right to IVF. And um, I wish we just pulled that trigger a lot sooner. So um, yeah, babies. If you have any thoughts on babies, uh, leave a comment like Covenant here, um, or give me a call. And then with that, we will do our final LinkedIn puzzle of the day, which is Queen. And baby girl seems to have settled down, so we can probably even do some star battles if you guys want to. Um, I always want to. So, again, with queens, you're looking for one crown in each row, each column, and in each colored shape. Um, we know right away that this purple row and column are filled up only with purple so that the crown has to be in this corner. That means we can eliminate everything around it, everything in that row and everything in that, or everything in that column and everything in this row. Furthermore, we can take away anywhere that there's purple because we've already accounted for its crown. So that means that red is only in this column. So we can take away red anywhere that's not in this column. That leaves gray to be the only one in this column, so we could take away where there's gray in anything but this column. Um, so with these little shapes, we can automatically take this one away because if we had a star here, it would eliminate these three and this one. So it would take away the blue altogether, and if we had a star here, it would take away the brown altogether. So that leaves the pink, <laughs> two in the pink right here, um, as the only ones only places that the pink crown can go in this column so everything else in these in this column can go everything beside it can go uh, everything in the brown column can go except for the brown everything beside it can go and everything else in these two rows can go because uh, the pink and the brown will account for the crowns in these two rows and that rhymed that was kind of neat the pink and the brown account for the crown, so there you go. Um, so now the blue is in this column only. We can take that away. That means we can't have one here because that would eliminate all of the orange. Um, the yellow is only in this column, so everything can go that's not yellow. That rhymes too. I'm just, I'm just a rapper, y'all. I really am. I used to be a rapper back in the day. And then that goes away. So now the... Um, orange is only in this um, column. In fact, the orange is the only left here. This is the only place the on that the orange can go or any of them can go. And I'm left talking weird today, sorry. So that means that anything around it can go. So that's good. That leaves the red right here. Um, that leaves Let's see. Okay. Yeah, there, that leaves the green here. Take away everything around it in that column. The yellow is only in this column. And the blue is only in this row. So these two rows are accounted for, so we can't have a gray here. So that leaves our gray crown here our brown crown here, our pink crown here. So we just eliminated quite a bit. So now, because we can't have anything around this crown, we could take that away and the blue crown is here and the yellow crown is there and there you have it.
Well done, everybody. Very good. All right, so we're done with our LinkedIn puzzles for today. Um, when it comes to babies, as a man, Chris, like, how come you are so cool with uh, liking cute babies? <laughs> Why? <laughs> They're just cute. Oh, they're so squidgy. <laughs> That's sweet. How come? How come you wanted wanted babies? Did you want to see yourself in a kid, or wanted to meet a new person, or? Babies. <laughs> That's a good enough reason, I think. Well, I like that you like babies. My husband's pretty cool, y'all. All right, so we are done with our LinkedIn puzzles, but let's do a couple of star battles. We got a little bit of time, and also they're so fun. So I'm going to start with a 10 by 10 and a 1 star. And um, I do this because these are most similar to the LinkedIn puzzles. Uh, so yeah, let's talk through. And of course, you can interrupt me at any time by calling in or leaving a comment if you have any thoughts about um, babies, puzzles, sexuality, whatever. We're here, chilling at the library. <laughs> so okay, to set this puzzle up, um, we have three different colors in the first three rows. So we can automatically eliminate anything in these shapes that's outside of these three rows. <coughs> and this rule works with any amount of stars or crowns that you're looking for. So we're looking for one. So we can take away everything that is pink, blue, or green outside of the first three rows. That leaves red is our star here. So we can take away all the red, take away everything around the star, and take away everything in a row in the row and column around it. Um, in the bottom three rows, these three shapes, the orange, gray, and purple, are solidly within the bottom three rows. So anything that's outside of these three shapes can be eliminated. So that can all go. Um, that leaves our light blue star here. That means we can eliminate everything in that column. That leaves our purple star here. Take, take away everything in that column and also these rows. Anything that's around it. Um, can't have a star here because that would um, eliminate our yellow. Uh, let's see. Can't have a star here because that would take away our orange. Um, our green star is here. We could take away everything around it, everything in that row. Pink star has to be in this row. We could take away everything around it. Yellow star is here. This one figured itself out pretty quick, so we can just take away everything in those columns and rows. Now this column is the only place the gray can be, so that can't be the dark blue. So that one's here, the pink one's here, orange one's here, and finally the gray one is here. Well done. They're too easy though. Let's 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 step it up a notch and look for our two star puzzles. These are a little bit more challenging. All right, so let's start this one. Now, even though we're looking for two stars, it's the same rules. Um, so I'm still going to count the amount of shapes and colors within the rows and columns. So look at the bottom three rows. Notice how these have the um, these three shapes fully within them. 
so anything outside of these shapes in these bottom three rows needs to go because we cannot have stars in there. They're all accounted for um, by these three shapes. Now this shape here, this gray, can be, oops, <laughs> can be identified as, I'm all over the place, sorry. We could take away the entire thing because whenever we have a three by anything, we know that the uh, middle can be eliminated. So this Tetris T configuration will always have stars here and here. Um, so we can take those away because they're around it. Um, so now we know that there's a star here. Um, definitely one red star here at least and that's about all we can figure out but look at this brown now that we've eliminated these down this is definitely a three by two as well so we can take away the middle three by anything you can take away the middle um, three by three you can take away the middle dot three by two both in the middle and three by one of course the one in the middle um, the second star for this column is definitely here so these can go um, let's see. Now this dark blue shape, we can't have any there because if we uh, had stars there, it would eliminate the dark blue. Um, we can't have a star here because that would take away our ability to have two stars in the lavender shape. That leaves the orange shape as a three by one, which is great. So we know that stars would be there and there. And we can take away everything around those stars because they can't touch. All right, so let's see what else we can chunk down. And again, chunk is the uh, is the uh, official word <laughs> that I use anyway. Um, let's see. All right, now this column is completely accounted for which means that the dark blue is only within this uh, column here, so everything outside of it can go. That means that we have a three by one, look at that, in the lavender, so we can take away that entire column and know that our stars are there and there. We could take that one away too. Okay, so, let's see, now if we look at our um, two by two rule, where in each two by two grid we have to have at least one star, and then also look at the fact that we must have four stars all together in the top two rows, that um, if we have two stars in this pink shape, uh, one star here and one star here, this is the only place we can have stars, that'll account for our four. So that means that there has to be a star here and there cannot be stars in any of this pink region that's outside of these first two rows. So this whole row is accounted for, which is great. Um, so that means pink can only be in the top row here, which is very helpful. Um, let's see. The first red star has to be here. Um, that means that the second one um, has to be here because you can't have two here. So the yellow star has to be here. The second yellow star has to be here. Uh, the red stars are accounted for, so we can keep these in mind as we move forward. Because the red star is definitely on this row, we can't have two stars in this row, so the light green's got to be here. So we can take everything away there. That leaves our second star for the light green, and our second star for this row, and first star for the red. Finished up red, finished up this column. All right. Let's see, definitely a star here. In fact, if we look at our two by twos, there's a star here for sure and a star here for sure. One here for sure, but we can't really narrow this one down too much more. Um, let's look at this. Yeah, okay. So in these two rows, we have to have, again, four stars all together. And the only missing place that we can have that four star would be here, so it has to be there. That means the second star for this row has to be in this blue. 
Um, let's see. Okay. Now the yellows are definitely here and here. So since the yellow star is here for sure, we can know that the second star being here will eliminate this one and this one. So now look at this, we have a two by three or a three by two. So we can take away the middle and definitely have a star here, definitely have a star here. So these can go and this whole column is taken care of. Now in this blue region, we have a two by two here and then one here. So the stars are here and here for sure. Um, let's see. And since we know there's a star here and here and definitely a star here and here, these two rows are accounted for. So we can't have anything else outside of those rows. So the two yellows are definitely here. Our second purple is here, so definitely not here. We got a three by one in the pink. The middle can go. And let's see, I can take that one away. This row is good, and we're done, guys. Just about. We got this one, this one. This row is done, and our final star for the brown is here. Our final star of the puzzle is here. Well done. So that was good. We got that done in, what's, how many minutes is 430 seconds? Seven minutes? That sucks. <laughs> Yeah, 420, yeah, so seven minutes. That's not too bad. Look, it says we were fast. We weren't very fast, but we were fast. Um, okay, so that was pretty good. And those are star battles if you want to keep on playing your queens games. But I think that's enough for today. It's almost noon here. So, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and hang it up. I want to let her sleep and then we'll check her booty. But otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in to talk about babies with us. And um, we'll see you tomorrow for our next day's LinkedIn puzzles. All right, signing out.